beautiful people Michelle here from Mickey Art and today I am um, continuing this experiment with mixing whites <laughs> um, first of all I'm going to introduce you to my colors and show you what I am oops hold on that wasn't the plan so that's phthalo blue you just see it there this is Viridian Hue Green, which some of you will know is one of my favourite colours. So let's get rid of those. And then, hold on, what I want is to have the same amount in each pot. So that we create something similar. Um... And then in this one, I have mixed up a purple, and this is a glorious purple. Um, it's a bit bluer than it looks on the screen. Um, let me just. Now I've had this bit drying, so you can sort of see where it's thinner, how purple it is. Um, it's. It's a very funky, sort of very royal purple, and it's made of the uh, phthalo blue and my crimson red. So, just had that down on the floor next to the heater. <laughs> so, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting these, I've mixed up some white, um, and I'm just going to make kind of a a white version of each of these colors I'm, I'm, I'm a bit sick of the harsh whiteness that we get in a, some of our paintings and I really am looking to create a different reality for me so just even that up Put that lid on. Now I mix all my paints up. I mix the whole tube at once. And that's why you see me using these um, peanut butter jars. If you're allergic to peanut butter to the point where that's going to be a problem, please don't buy my paints, paintings. Um, and I mix them up with flow troll and water. And then I use those to create magic. <laughs> so that I've already got them all prepped up and I'm not mixing, spending hours and hours and hours mixing a small batch at a time except for the purple I just mixed a small batch <laughs> so let's see how glorious that purple actually is just gonna put that much in there and whisk it in, look at that oh yummy Now my target with this is so that we don't get that harsh whiteness, but we still get that contrast. Um, so I don't don't desire these to be very coloured. You could, I mean, you could do a middle one and have like the nearly white and then the um, sort of a mid range. Let's do the viridian hue. See, it's just so pretty. It goes to that mint colour that's apparently all the rage for 2020. And I just want to show you just how easy it is to, to blend colours and to make them into something that's just a little bit more interesting. And you don't have to go out and buy lots and lots of different colours. Just mix, mix, mix. Play, play, play. And as you can imagine, the more blue you add, the darker it gets. Or the more green you get, add, the darker it gets. So, I'm not so sure about that mint green. But, let's give this a go anyway so we're actually gone from having just three colors 
um, to having six, which is quite exciting. And the question then becomes, where do we put the silicon? Do we put it in all the dark colors? Do we put it in all the light colors? Do we put it in all the colors? Do we, what do we do? Uh, that's a personal taste. But I am going to personally, first of all, before I do that, just going to check my consistencies. Um, see, my green is a little bit runnier than my blue. Um, and my purple's probably even runnier than, um, thicker than the blue. So I'm just going to bring that down a bit. And I highly recommend that you mix your colours, like the, the water content in them, before you add your silicon. And that way the silicon doesn't, there we go, it's much better. Um, then the silicon doesn't get all broken down and emulsified and not do its job. Alright, these should be pretty much... Yep, no, I'm happy with those. Um, and I'm going to have another go with our... <laughs> with our pancake dispenser. Why? Because I want to. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that my pancake dispenser has dispensed very white paintings in the past. This is a great way to avoid that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to reset the camera and be back with you. Or maybe I should do this bit this close up. Oh, put the silicon in. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Now, probably got about two ounces of paint in each of these cups which is about 60 mils for those of us who do metric um, quick stir and so I don't measure things I know there's people out there um, who do measure everything and tell you exactly how many ounces and how many grams and how many of this and that and how what they mix their paints with and blah 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 that doesn't work for me that's not fun anyway so what I'd like to create if possible <laughs> is um Kind of a bit more in there. I'm gonna go around dark on top of light. way around am I going? I don't know. Ah! Blue is next. I've got dark blue there, light blue there, so let's swap them. Where am I going? I'll go that way.
I think I've lost all control of what order I was in so I'm just I'm pretty sure I know which two that each one of them hasn't been in so and then just a and for those of you that are getting really concerned yes I am going to be using a dark <laughs> a, a big canvas this is we're up to a cup full so far now as a rough calculation and I like purple so that's going all over the place um, as a rough calculation for you if you were to go sort of one milliliter per square inch does that and you're all going yeah you're doing metric and imperial at the same time Michelle yes get over it <laughs> so that's looking quite cool in there and we have about nine and a half ounces which is about 290 mil so the canvas that I have is 16 inch by 20 inch so if you were to follow that calculation that I just said 16 times 20 um, 0 carry that and 6 twos are 12 0 2 is that right or should that be a 2 there yes that should be a 2 there ok um, so 3 what am I doing yeah it's 320 square inches and I've got less than so from that perspective I know that I'm going to put some spring paint down first I did it upside down that's why it's so confusing me but that's right 16 times 20 16 times 2 is 32, 32 with an extra zero. Come on, brain. You've only got a maths degree, Michelle. Get over it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to reset the camera and be right back. Okay, welcome back. Welcome forward. Um, as I said, it's 16 by 12. 16 by 20. Oh, where is my head today? Definitely not on my shoulders. Um, so I'm going to add an extra, um, extra white paint and this is just to create a guarantee that we're going to get the whole thing covered in paint. Um, the cool thing about doing this is that it allows the paint that you add to stretch just that little bit more it doesn't roll over on itself it doesn't have as much friction and if some stage during the pour you suddenly go oh my gosh that's so pretty I have to stop um you've got paint on the whole thing how's it getting any better than that so I'm not really putting that much paint in the middle because that's where I'm going to be dispensing most of my paint so I know there's going to definitely be paint there the 
thing is I don't actually want to have too much of this in here on here because if you remember my target with this painting is to not have white paint <laughs> Highly recommended to always have an old rag sitting beside you to wipe your hands. Um, I have boxes of gloves. A, I never remember to put them on. And B, they just get dirty and I take them off and throw them away and I feel really wasteful throwing them away. <laughs> Alright. So... First of all, I'm going to make sure that you guys can see. And we've got our pot. And this has a little trapdoor under the bottom that when you pull the handle, it opens the trapdoor. Um, great for dispensing pancakes or gravy. And I uh, what shapes do I want to do? That is a lot of cells, guys. If I was to buy another one of these, I would buy one that's got a concave, like a cone in the bottom. Apparently they, they're available. So. <laughs> that is awesome. I really like it. Let's see what happens when we tilt it. I'm so concerned. Hold on. I'm just going to grab my stool and check that you guys can see because the camera is so far up to get this big size canvas. See, look, you can't see half of it. Oh. Oh, really? It was zoomed out. <laughs> zoomed in, I mean. That's so funny. Oh good, we can see more of it now. Yay! I'll zoom you in and show you some of the cells. Look at this. So cool. I'm not sure where the blue went though. The dark blue. The purple's really prominent. There is some blue around, but not a lot. Alright, let's tilt it and see what happens. <laughs> There is some blue through here, some tiny little bit there, and there's some coming through. Should I just... <laughs> there's so many cells already, I'm like, do I torch it or not? Just a quick torch, pop any air bubbles. Love this.
All right. First target is to get rid of the corners. Um, and I think I might even actually go with a corner catcher. Um, I haven't seen corner catchers used a lot lately. This is a, this is a corner catcher. It's a bit of cardboard. <laughs> and all you do is you fold it in half and you stick it there once you start getting the bits that you don't want to lose. So let's tilt. Just bringing it back, just rounding out some of those cells again. And that's pretty. I'm going to leave that corner catcher up there and grab another one. Take it over to that corner. And back. And down to this corner. I must say this purple and green are looking stunning together. Okay, so this is where the what do I do now moment comes in. <laughs> I've got this beautiful stunning piece through here that I absolutely think is glorious with a lump in it. Um I've got a very tight swirly bit here that do I tip it off or do I pull it back and stretch it um, do I keep the green or do I tilt it off How much is too much tilting is one of the biggest questions. <laughs> Eek. Oh, 
I like it. I like it a lot. There are patches that if I could edit them out, I would, but not enough to do what needs to be done to get rid of them. <laughs> All right. I am super loving this part. I think if I was to do this again, I would decrease the amount of green, maybe even not put in the mint and just do the viridian hue and then the the light purple dark purple light blue dark blue all right i'm going to clean my hands and then get you down and show you close up what it looks like because it's cool okay let's come down and have a look Let's start over here because this is the part I love. Look at this. It's stunning. Just so pretty. Look at this one. I really love this patch. Where's my finger? This patch here. And this patch. And like that whole area there. I love it. Love, 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 love. Oh, how does it get any better than this? <sighs> Oops, I think I've just turned you upside down. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. I'm really liking this. Um, check out these bits here. Um, these are the corner catches. They're kind of like mini little paintings. And if I get my torch, and just see if anything else wants to pop up. Or it's probably done its dash actually. No, it's done its dash. Now there's a whole heap of paint left in there and there's a huge amount of paint that's dribbled off. So I think I'm actually going to put this playing with the extras in another video because this is going to be a long, long video. Alright guys, I will be back once this is dry to share with you the deliciousness it becomes. So I will see you in three, two, one. Ta-da! It is dry. It is beautiful. I really, 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 really like this. <laughs> can you tell? Like, really, really? Like, can you? Uh-huh. Um, oh, I like it. I like it. I must say, I'm not a huge fan of the mintiness that the Viridian Hue bought in. Um, I'm not sure whether I would change it to grass green or not, or... I think it does need that extra green tinge to it. If it didn't have the green tinge in it. Um, yeah. What do you reckon? I, let me know in the comments. Do you like the green? <laughs> Some people do, obviously. Not everybody likes every colour. Did you know that? Um, I really, 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 really like it. How does it 
does it get any better? I'm wondering though, which way around you would hang it also. Hmm, what does it look like that way around? Oh, my tins are falling off. This is probably going to get cut off for you, sorry. My apologies. Hmm. I'm not sure. I think I would actually do it that way with the green at the bottom because it kind of looks like it's steaming up. Can you see that? Does that look like that for you? I think I would hang it that way. So using this green area at the bottom as your indication would you put that at the top at the bottom at the left or at the right let me know i know it's my choice and i'm 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 the artist and i should be the one that makes the choices in these things but i love hearing from you how would you do it and one of the things i tend to do when i'm uh, make a piece of art unless it's really obvious to me something I actually don't put hanging loopy things on the back of the art when I send them away, when I sell them. Um, because they are so individual and I might tell, have the hangy things so that it's landscape and the person wants a portrait. So yeah, I just leave that up to you guys, whoever chooses to own it. Anyway, I really like it. And I'm really grateful that you came to play with me. So thanks again for coming to play. I adore you. How much fun can you have? And what grand and glorious adventures can you have today? I know for me, I have come out to the studio to paint a whole heap of paintings. Because I've just been invited to go to Hamilton for a four-day class. To teach a four-day class up there. And... Um, so I'd like to have some videos for you guys to watch while I'm away. So I'm going to go and do that. I adore you. Have fun. Bye-bye.